Federal government ignores 17-year-old concession fee debts, renews terminal leases. That's one of the topics we are going to be discussing on the program this morning. Also, workers threaten to withdraw from National Housing Fund over unremitted funds. Of course, we'll be looking at the headlines on some of our national dailies on of the press this morning. Very good morning and uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And today we're glad that you're there. Today is a Thursday, so we think business when we're talking uh, all the issues that we're talking about. If, even if we're talking about any kind of topic, we want you to be thinking business, especially at this time where everybody is trying to have different streams of income without necessarily uh, making one to suffer uh, for the other one. There's a lot of things that, that there are a lot of things that you can you can do uh, now that we have the opportunity of the internet. There's so many things that you can do to get money while still at the work that you are doing. So if you are, for instance, working in uh, a media house like I am working and you're sitting in front of your computer and you have 30 minutes, there are things you can do in 30 minutes that will give you something that uh, uh, will be better than nothing. Like we say in Nigeria, at all, at all, I'm bad. Okay, so if you're thinking about anything today, think business as well. Get a business plan and you can have some other people that you will consult with and they'll tell you what you need to do. On Tuesday, we were talking with someone who said that his company and so many other companies are responsible for funding startups. So if you have an idea, you take the idea to them, they work on the, the, the plan and give you a business um, plan that you can use and then they fund it and then they supervise you until you become as independent as you need to be before the hands of or they continue to be with you depending on your choice. So there are so many opportunities that abound and we're hoping that you're going to take advantage of them and make sure there is no longer any complaint. Yes, our country may be very difficult at this moment, but uh, we're hoping there's light at the end of the tunnel. And if there's light at the end of the tunnel, adjust your eyes well enough so that when that light really shines bright, you won't be squinting your eyes and trying to grope your way uh, as if you're still in the dark. Well, there are some things that are trended on the um, internet and everywhere else, and some stories that are very interesting to us that may not form the hot topic for today. First of them is that MFL's siblings withdraw case, uh, case against the AGF uh, and uh, the DSS. Remember that uh, uh, two of the brothers separately filed some motions uh, to stop the DSS and AGF from uh, prosecuting them. The fundamental rights enforcement suit that was filed against the Department of State Services, DSS, and the Attorney General of the Federation at the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, by the two brothers of uh, the suspended governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin and Mefele, uh, has been withdrawn. That's what news we have had this morning. So Justice Emmanuel Okbe struck out the suit on Wednesday after the applicants, through their lawyer, informed the court of their decision to discontinue the case. The suspended CBN governor's siblings, George Emefiele and Okanta Emefiele, had filed separate ex parte motions at the court seeking order of the court to enforce their fundamental rights to freedom of movement, among others, by issuing perpetual injunction restraining the DSS from inviting, intimidating, harassing, and arresting or detaining them in relation to matters or body of matters which relates to the ongoing investigation of Mr. Godwin Mefele and or matters outside the constitutional and statutory mandate of the first respondents, which is DSS. However, the resumed hearing of the cases on Wednesday, counsel for the applicants, Grace uh, Husani, informed the court that the applicants separately filed this notice of this continuance of the case. The lawyer, however, did not explain to the court why the applicants decided to discontinue the cases. Uh, the counsel for the DSS Ibrahim Awo, who did not oppose the discontinuance applications by Mephiles brothers, 
However, I urged the court to dismiss the case instead of striking it out as requested by the applicant's counsel. The DS has also uh, or the counsel to the DS has also demanded a substantial cost of 2 million naira against the applicants in favor of the respondents. And the counsel for the AGF, Meimuma uh, Lami Sheru, also concerned or concord rather with the submission of the DSS counsel and also demanded a 2 million naira cost. So Justice Okwe, in his ruling, struck out the cases and ordered that no cost should be paid by the applicants. And we're just hoping that a lot of other people who have gone to the courts to get the perpetual injunctions will refrain from it as well and just go to the courts and prove their cases. A lot of people just, uh, uh, because they have cases with the DSS, with the EFCC, with uh, whatever body uh, of uh, uh, enforcement agencies, uh, will just go to the courts and get perpetual injunctions. Some of them committed some atrocities, as we would like to call them, when they were still in office. And as governors, because some of them are governors, as governors they had immunity and they could not be prosecuted. And as soon as they left office that gave room for prosecution, they went to the courts and got perpetual injunctions. And we keep asking, some of us that are not learned gentlemen, we keep asking, why do the courts grant these perpetual injunctions if anybody is not guilty. They should just go and prove their cases in court. For instance, if you ask me, where are you, com where are you coming from? And I tell you, I am from Bansara, you know, Goja, local government. And you say, I'm not from Bansara. Why would I go and get a perpetual injunction to, to, to prevent someone from asking me that? I'll just go to court, bring all the witnesses, talk to my village head and whatever I need to do, and then make sure that it is proven that I'm from that community. So why do people get perpetual injunctions? We keep asking. But, well, uh, in the wisdom of the court, uh, the, the last hope of the common man, they give perpetual injunctions to people, some of them, uh, who should be in jail, get perpetual injunction, and they are not in jail. They are not even prosecuted at all. Some of them, who could ordinarily just be set free because they will prove their case, uh, they just don't have that time to go to the courts, and so they go and get perpetual injunction and just stay back. Uh, well, in the coming days, we will know um, what is what, and there must come a time when uh, all these things, whether perpetual injunctions or not, something must give, and then we will know the truth. We can separate, like my people say, you separate the vegetable from the oil <laughs> when you're cooking. I don't know how that is, but sometimes it is possible. We also have another story which is talking about the doctors in Ogun State set for strike on September 1 due to unpaid allowances. And it's really worrisome. Why would doctors be owed? Why would anybody be owed? The good book says a laborer deserves his wages. Around 450 doctors in Ogun State uh, Ogun State-owned health facilities are set to go on an indefinite strike starting September 1 due to alleged non-payment of hazard allowances by the government. These doctors work in various health institutions including Olabisi Onabanjo Teaching University Hospital, General Hospitals, Primary Health Centers and the Ministry of Health and Health Management Boards. The Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, issued a 21-day ultimatum to the Ogun State Government during its annual general meeting on August 10, 2023, demanding the payment of hazard allowances dating back to January 2023. In a letter dated August 11, 2023, addressed to the Governor, Dakwa Abiodun, and signed by the NMA Chairman and Secretary, respectively, the organization threatened industrial action if demands were not met by August 31. Today is August 24 already. Dr. Kunle Ashimi, the state's uh, NMA chairman, expressed state doctor's frustration with unfulfilled promises by the government and emphasized the importance of hazard allowances. Dr. Ashimi spoke of how the doctors at federal institutions are already collecting hazard allowance, uh, meaning, or meanwhile, the state institutions have not and have been clamoring for it for some time now. And we do not know why. In a, in a, in a climb, in a, in a country where we are shorting, or we are short on doctors, or medical staff rather, and these things are still happening, hazard allowance. 
I usually say this, if you go to a school, for instance, sometimes you find private uh, institutions paying as low as 15,000, as low as 20,000, some paying 30,000, and some paying above that. But the teachers who went to teach there were told you were going to be paid this much, and they accepted. And so they have no moral grounds to strike so long as this paltry sum is coming at the time it should come. So that is what is called an agreement. So if the government agrees to pay a particular amount as hazard allowance or as salary or as whatever kind of emolument, they should honor the agreement. Whoever hires a laborer should be ready to keep to the agreement. I even see in the Nigerian society, sometimes you have as maybe like a domestic servant or you have someone working in your company, a private company, and then you pay these people. And then whoever doesn't come back to say thank you to you for paying them the salary of the work they did for you is sacked or given sanctions. I've seen this many times and you ask them when, when I, then sometimes I have opportunity to cancel some people or to ask what was the problem. Maybe I'm like a go-between uh, these two people, the employee and the employer, and I ask what the problem is. And the, the employer will say, this person is not grateful. He doesn't ever say thank you when I pay salary. And I'm like, what? Do you say thank you to the person when he works for you? And now you're paying for the labor that he or she has put in. And if he doesn't say or she doesn't say thank you to you, you sack that person or you give a query to the person. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know. Some people have argued that, yes, someone who pays you should be able uh, to get the kind of uh, um, appreciation that he deserves. And I'm just asking myself, what kind of appreciation? Somebody works, you pay. That person is paying you the work. You are paying the money for the work. I, you know, I don't know. I don't see anything. It's, a, it's an mutual agreement. I'm doing this and you are paying me. If you cannot say thank you for the work that I'm doing, I shouldn't be saying thank you to you. It's just an agreement that we have. And some people feel that because you're paying the cash, you are the one or who's, uh, uh, who is making sure that person survives. His life depends on you. It doesn't work that way. We should stop this mentality. And that's why I've seen some, uh, the other day I was passing uh, through the third mainland bridge and somebody just parked the car there, handed over the key to the Oga because the Oga has been somehow. And this Oga unfortunately cannot drive. And so he was making calls and trying to get someone else to come and drive him from third mainland bridge <laughs> back home. So you, you're talking down on your driver, you're, you're maltreating your driver, you're doing a lot of things, saying unprintable things uh, to your driver because he's a driver, a common driver, and you cannot even drive. And because you are the one paying him at the end of the month, uh, maybe 30000 or 40000 uh, you think you're the lord over that person. An employer is not lord over anybody. An employee also is not lord over anybody. It's a symbiotic relationship. You, you help me, I help you. So let's, let's stop this fact where, or this uh, attitude where you employ somebody and you think because you, the money you're paying that person is helping them in their family, you are a god. Don't play god. So the government, if they accept to do a particular thing, should always do it. And even if it's a private person, you employ someone and you accept to do a thing or you agree that you are going to be doing X, Y, Z, then do it. At the end of the month, pay them their salaries, give them their allowances and all that. We cannot have a situation where people will go on strike again in a country where there are no uh, health workers. So doctors, 450 in Ogun State alone, how many do they have? in that state that 450 will be disgruntled and then they will go on strike. Now the NMA uh, nationwide is also talking about strike, they are also talking about the fact that some of the agreements reached with the government are not being met. Do we keep recycling this bad behavior all the time? Well. I don't know how government works. Maybe there's a bug that bites uh, the people that get into government. I've seen a lot of good people gone bad, but I do hope that there will be a revolution. I'm not talking about fighting on the streets, but there will be a, 
a revolution of the mind where people will begin to think differently and more positively and see that everybody is important and that a laborer deserves his wages. Whether it is ASU, whether it is NLC, whether it is uh, NMA, whether it is uh, uh, workers at the ports, whoever is working deserves to be given their wages. And you, the person who is working, if you agreed to collect something X, Y, Z, do not ask for an extra on, except you really deserve it. So if by after every three years you're supposed to be promoted and given more money, that's a different case. But you don't go there and say, because at Christmas he did not give me largesse, uh, which you didn't agree to before you started work then you stop your work. That doesn't work that way as well. So everybody should respect the agreements they entered into uh, before they started working. Government, respect. People who are working for the government, respect as well. No matter who you are, everybody deserves respect. Okay, um, we're going to take a short break right now. When we return, we'll start with our, uh, the headlines from uh, national dailies. We do hope that you're going to be a part of that as well. Stay with us.